old friends is a play about a group of people who live in a small town, Horton's small town of Harrison, Texas, who uh, have known each other for years, actually in some cases generations. I would actually call it Old Frenemies. It's uh, set in a small town and it's about the goings-ons when um, the prodigal daughter has sort of returned to town and how that affects the romantic relationships and like familial relationships of everyone who lives there. My character sort of gets everything stirred up. She's been away for 30 years and she and her husband are due back uh, at the beginning of the play and um, this event happens. It sort of shifts the ground underneath everybody. I like to think of it as a, a love story within, in the midst of a war, basically, that you have two people that are trying to, to rise out of something that they've been steeped in uh, and find sort of what their, what their life is about and what they want and what they mean together. A wonderful, complex circus of characters, lambs and wolves, this play is just a surprise a minute to me. Uh, it's the first Horton Foot play I've ever done, but knowing his work from having seen it, this is darker. It's sort of the underbelly of Trip to Bound the Fall. I love the play. I've been involved with it for a number of years. I did a reading for it um, when Horton was still living. We did a reading actually for Jim Houghton Signature Theater when you were at the other complex. And um, I always thought it was his darkest play and really his funniest play. It's been tricky and really fun to figure out the style of the play and the tone. To find the balance between hilariously, raucously funny and also moving and sad and emotionally provocative. A play of Horton Foots, which is, it seems to me, unlike any of the others I know. As always, the characters are vivid and separate. But this one has less of the milk of human kindness, perhaps. It is um, a myriad of um, characters, not only um, overt characters, but subtle things. Uh, I think that's part of the reason I, I, I like it. And at this point, in the mid-60s, when this play is set, uh, a number of them have become uh, because of the oil boom in East Texas, exorbitantly wealthy. And I don't know if this is a cautionary tale, I'm not sure it's important or not for, to the play, but it, it tends to have made all of them miserable in one way or another. Sybil is sort of a character that my father writes often and plays. They're kind of like the moral center often of the play. And I feel that Sybil is sort of that in this play. There's a lot of chaos around her. There's a lot of drinking and sort of crazy behavior. And you feel that she's trying to sort of find her way in the middle of all this chaos and all the things that are going on around her. I, I thought, well, this is great. This is yet another modern playwright. Someone who really has delved into his own uh, part of society in, in this Texas town. And I thought, given Michael Wilson and given Lois and given Betty, who've all and given Hallie, there was no reason for me not to feel safe in entering that world. My character, I really had a kind of a one idea of her, but Michael Wilson, I truly think Michael Wilson is one of the greatest American directors. I used to watch him work at Hartford Stage and think, how does he do all that? It's like he was just a very nurturing young man um, from the South, you know, really related on that level and he'd been at the Alley Theater for a long time so he really knew Texas inside out. He, he's so insightful and his understanding of Horton's work is so precise and detailed and so she's become fascinating, much more fascinating to me even than she was. I mean I liked her when I, you know, but I saw her more in kind of primary colors and now Michael's given me all these shade shadings to offer to the interpretation and I just think he's brilliant. Mm -hmm.